This is a continuation of our discussion of how the human soul functions and we're up to principle number two. So this will be a discussion and questions about the principle of absorption. So, darling, <laughs> tell us about absorption. Well, should we read my comments first and then we can have a discussion about some of the questions that we might yeah. have. So absorption is the principle that truth cannot be absorbed by the soul or flow into the soul on a given subject while error existing within the soul precludes the absorption of the truth and error cannot be absorbed by the soul or flow into the soul on a given subject while truth is present and precludes the absorption of the error. Mm -hmm. So it applies for both error and truth. Yep. So if I have truth in my soul and it's really in my soul and I have a developed intellect, this uh, error cannot any longer flow into my soul after that point. Yep. Of course, it depends on me having a developed intellect. And of course, for most people who have developed truth in a certain area, that would be the case. Mm -hmm. there's, un there's certain circumstances where it's not, but it doesn't apply to the most, most of humanity. Yep. It says, this understanding of absorption helps the individual understand and reflect upon the process of change yes. or the change of state or condition as it affects the soul. That is... For the truth to enter the soul, error must first be released from the soul or not already be present. Mm -hmm. For error to enter the soul, truth must first either be relinquished or not be already present within yep. the soul. Yep. So what we're basically saying there is that it, it, the only way the soul can change is by understanding the principle of absorption. And that is, I can only absorb the new thing if the old thing's gone. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that's the, that's the only way I can do it. Or it wasn't there in the first place. Yes. All right. So in the case of a child or a little baby, um, because they're a new incarnation under the earth, there's a lot of things that are not there already in terms of the understanding of truth. And so the, it's quite easy to absorb the error for that child. And this is why it's such an important role being a parent, because yeah. we've got to be very careful with what we do as a parent, because... Anything that we present to the child that is actually an error from God's perspective will be absorbed by that soul yeah. automatically because there's nothing to prevent that soul from absorbing it. Yeah. So it's, they're like an open book. And I think there was a quote of a, a, a priest or someone who said once that you give me a child before the age of seven and I can make him into my to the Christian faith. I forget the yeah. faith it was, uh, you know, make him into that faith. Yeah. And the reason why is because that child is going to absorb all of the error or truth that the person who's teaching them has Perhaps. over a period of time. Yeah. 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 And it's not an intellectual absorption. It's a soul-based emotional absorption of mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If an individual has heard what they believe is the truth and believes they have accepted such truth, but is also aware that the soul contains beliefs and emotions that are in disharmony with that truth, and they often act upon those disharmonious emotions, then this is proof that the truth heard has really yet to enter the soul and cause change to the soul, and therefore only exists as a belief, and I wouldn't even say a belief, it only exists as a thought or a memory in their own mind. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's all it is. Yeah. 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 So... Uh, in the previous discussion, we were talking about preclusion, and this is this is where these two marry so much, isn't it? Yes. It's because when error has entered us or truth has entered us, then it precludes anything else entering us on that same topic. Correct. And this um, principle of absorption is about how we go about change, changing that, how it happens. Yes. And um, and I like what you said there that you know many people believe they've accepted a new truth when the error is still dictating their, or the, the yeah. previous belief, emotional belief, is still dictating how they act and what happens in their life yes. and how they feel and how they respond and yes. all of these things. And you see this out, like, honestly, when you look at air, like the average person on, on Earth, their day-to-day -day life, you see it in every moment of their day-to-day -day life, pretty much. Yeah. You know, the average person who believes they're loving is often not very loving in, in almost a moment-by-moment moment. Um, time frame Basis, yeah, yeah. and uh, and that's quite sad yeah. but it's because they believe they're loving while at the same time acting upon all of these unloving emotions that are within them that they're unwilling to release yeah. and it, in the end God can't change what we're unwilling to release mm -hmm. God can only have an effect of change 
when we're willing to go through a process of release. Yep. And this is also part of what we need to learn is that many people believe that just because they have a new thought, they've gone through the process and they haven't. Yeah. And, and that's why they haven't changed. So true, true change can only happen when you go through the change by releasing the emotional causal error of, that causes or preclude, that precludes the truth from entering. Yeah. And once you do that, you can absorb a new truth. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this is really, this principle really strikes to the heart of what you are talking to people about in lectures all of the time. Yeah. You're saying that there is a situation in your soul right now as it exists and the only way for it to change and for you to change permanently is for you to engage this principle called absorption, yeah. which is to create a situation in your soul where new absor absorption of truth is possible. Exactly. And that's only possible if other You're things willing get moving. <laughs> to release the error. Yes. Yes. That's what I think about preclusion as like the snapshot in time, the rock hard cement that yeah. is there now. Yeah. But absorption is the principle where everything can get moving again. We yes. can unconstipate our soul Correct. and let, yeah. let things out yeah. so that new things can come in. Correct. So yeah. absorption is about allowing the change. Yeah. How do I allow the change? Yep. How do I sincerely change? Yep. If you understand absorption, you understand it's pointless trying to change with your intellect. Yep. You give that up, in fact. Yep. You give up trying to change things externally and you focus all of your attention in changing your soul, yep. changing how your soul loves in particular. Yep. Because remember, progression is all about love. Yes. So, so about changing how your soul loves. And that means getting rid of the unloving feelings inside of the soul yep and releasing them so that your soul is capable of becoming more loving. That's yeah. how change occurs. And it's really sad, isn't it, the, the amount that we, just about all of us, have been taught to honour the mind and to present a facade. Because in that way, we, we just try to change the facade and change the thoughts yep. without really focusing on what do I really feel about this topic? And mm. Many of us are terrified to even discover what we feel on many topics, yes. aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, and yet, until we do, we can't engage this principle of, of absorption. That's right. And when we look at the other principles, you know, of resistance, suppression and so forth, we can see that a lot of times it's things like judgment in particular that yeah. causes us to engage our will to stop the release of certain emotions. You know, there's certain feelings that we have inside of ourselves that we're not too happy are there, <laughs> even. No. Even ourselves, we're not happy we're there. <laughs> we know they're there, but we're not happy they're there. But we're very, very uh, unwilling to face that they're there, feel, feel them and release them. Yeah. As, a result, as a result, we don't change. Yeah. Uh, all we do is we try to force our action to be a certain thing. And usually when we force our action to be a certain thing without naturally changing, we become very harsh on ourselves and hard. And that's when people become very religiously hard and religiously mm. harsh and, you know, become what you would classify as, what is it, a uh, strong, staunch... Yeah, um, orthodox or well, I'd, I'd even evangelical say, or... Well, um, I'd go even further and become militant, militant in gotcha. their actions, yeah. you know, because they had to be so hard on themselves, so hard on themselves... Yeah trying to keep themselves in line that now they want to do the same to everything, everybody else. Yeah. And that's a very, very dangerous condition because that, that then justifies the, uh, a lot of violence on the planet is justified through that condition. Yeah, yeah. it's sad, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is sad. So the principle of absorption is all about the release of the soul's current condition to a new condition. Yes. Basically, yep. that's what it is. And, yep. and we can't release the soul's current condition uh, uh, we can't g obtain the new condition until the current condition is changed, is changed in some way through an emotional process, through a soul-based process yeah. that is going to be quite traumatic generally because, because the soul-based beliefs are firmly entrenched as feelings and belief systems within us. Yeah. And they are going to have to be worked through with a diligent effort on our part. And this is where I find most people are unwilling to engage a diligent effort mm -hmm. to discover and release their really true feelings that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand why you've presented these uh, principles in the way that you have in that first we must understand preclusion. We must understand that if it's there within us, nothing else can enter us. Exactly. So we have to be brave enough, as you just said, to discover what is within us before we can engage with the second principle, which is 
to start releasing or relieving ourselves of what's within us so that new things can be absorbed. And so that our soul can change. Yeah. So our yeah. soul can progress. Because yeah. true progression is not capable without the soul releasing the things that prevent our progression. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's that I find it quite sad that people don't get these basic principles because you can you can teach for years and years and years the aspects of divine truth, and if a person doesn't get these fundamental principles of how the soul operates, then then basically it's like talking to the air. You know, you, mm. you don't the person has no positive response to the divine truth, and and then they become downhearted and disappointed yeah. and disillusioned and, grumpy. And, <laughs> and usually grumpy and angry with the person trying to teach them, uh, rather than more honest about why they have such a strong desire to suppress the underlying emotions which are causing their stagnation. Yeah. 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 And that's where most people run into a lot of difficulty with divine truth. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and and let's so let's talk more about um, the difficulties that people face sure. with divine truth with regard to this process of with absorption. regard to this process because yep. uh, what I observe is and I've even observed it in myself in the past yep. is a desire to falsify our progress mm -hmm. even to ourselves yes um, uh, we like maintaining a position about ourselves that far exceeds our true development <laughs> yeah <laughs> I seem to have both ends of the spectrum problem in the that, past that I had also lower or higher than yeah the true I wanted to yeah. believe it was better yeah. now I have problems seeing it with clarity of about how the progress I have made but yeah. um, uh, so this is the way that I see a lot of people avoiding the truth of where they're at and the truth of absorption yeah. um, they seem to avoid this knowledge that it was what you've been saying that change really isn't possible until causal emotion flows yes and so what i see people do is attach a lot of importance to emotion but not causal, causal emotion. emotion yeah and so then i observe people trying to be emotional <laughs> yeah <laughs> When Without, they don't feel like being that. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, maybe I should say before then. I yeah. should say I see people trying to say they have changed when they haven't been emotional. And when, I say they haven't changed and it's quite obvious to the observer that they haven't changed. Their life hasn't changed, their outward demeanour hasn't changed, yeah. their feelings of joy, peace, satisfaction, none of that has changed. changed. They might have but, changed location. Yeah. Or they might have changed partner, or yeah. they might have changed, you know, something yeah. physical in their life. Yes. But their actual feelings haven't changed. Haven't changed. On those issues. Yeah. Um, but a lot of us feel like, well, but I know stuff here. <laughs> and if I think, and it might have even, when I heard it, felt a little bit nice or a little bit excited or a little bit sad. Mm. Um, but there hasn't been a huge. Uh, outpouring Transition. of emotion out mm. of me mm. but I want to believe I've changed and you want to believe you know it yes as and well which I, is sad it is sad isn't yeah. it um, and many of us can tell ourselves we know it because we can reel it off or speak it or yeah that's just the it. memory at work yes. you know it's like yes. any you, you give a child a whole series of exercises and you drum it into the child often enough it'll remember it it doesn't mean the child feels any different. No, that's <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It's like right. if the child wants to steal out of your purse, he's going to steal out of your purse whether you tell him a hundred times he's going to be punished for it or not. If he wants to do it, he'll do it. Yes. In the end, it's only if something changes within his soul that he will actually stop stealing. You know, like so. So you know, we we often think that we can browbeat ourselves and others into submission. And while we may change their actions, mm -hmm. the soul won't progress yeah. because the soul won't change. Yeah. And they'll often feel even more resistant to what we're trying to share with them than less. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can see that we do that because there are certain emotions within us already, yeah. which is the principle of preclusion. Of course. About fear of failing, wanting to, you know, fear of being rejected, fear of making mistakes, yes. fear of our emotion, judge of emotion, yeah. all of these things that then drive us to feel like we want to, we want to believe we've changed when we, when haven't. we haven't. This, we haven't engaged the principle of absorption. Correct. And all of those emotions you listed preclude us from actually exactly. changing. Yes. <laughs> That's the sad <laughs> yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 And because we're unwilling to feel them, we're actually precluded from changing. So we're absorbing more and more intellectual yeah. memories yeah. of, you know, words being spoken. We remember them, but it had no effect on our entire life. Yeah. And yeah. we still get sick, we still grow old, we still die, we still, 
we still act in unloving ways to our partner, our pa family, our children, our friends. You know, we still treat the environment badly and all those other things. And we do it all because nothing's really changed in our soul. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, it's a big mm. issue. Mm. And the other thing that I started to speak about earlier was where people attach importance on emotion rather than understanding that they need to feel the emotions surrounding the error that exists within them. Correct. And I do see people go into a sense of, or go into emotion, which is actually them justifying the error that is within them. Yeah, or rebelling. Or rebelling against, against the, the emotion. Or, yeah. yeah, against the truth or feeling like, it's not fair I'm not getting what I want. It's not fair that this is yep. happening. It's not fair and I'm not being loved and all of these things when actually they're avoiding the error-based belief that's within them. Yes. And so they're not actually feeling the causal emotional error. What they are feeling is their rebellion and just the rebellion against the truth or their justification of the error. That's yes. what they're really feeling. And of course, no change can occur when you do that. We are not, and that's that's the thing. We are not engaging this principle of absorption when we do that. Correct. It's not about tears. It's about whether we're willing to feel emotionally the errors that are within the soul, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And some of those errors may be rage and some yes. of them might be shame and some yep. of them might be fear and some of them might... But there's all sorts of emotions which will be attached to belief systems. Yep. So we might be enraged about the concept of having to be loving even. Yep. And that is an error that keeps our soul in a place where we're unwilling to be loving no matter how much love we receive. Yeah. And that obviously is going to prevent our soul from progression. Yeah. So, you know, we've got all of these things going on for, mo for most of us and, and we're not honest about it. That, that is the, that, see, this is where truth is so important with the human soul. Without truth, the human soul cannot progress. That's mm -hmm. why it's the truth that sets you free mm -hmm. because it's the truth that opens your soul to understanding what's in it. And it's only by understanding what's in it and releasing what's in it that you can change. So this is where you have to be very honest and truthful about what's really there. Yeah. You know, if you're really angry with your dad, you're really angry with your dad. And it doesn't matter how much you make out you're angry with your dad, you are really angry with your dad. And while that anger exists, there are certain things it's going to preclude yeah. from the absorption of truth. Yes. And this is where I see... So this is such a, a big area of self-reflection, self-honesty. Mm. I, you know, I have and I've observed other people, they try to engage with this process. So if we think about it in terms of preclusion and absorption, mm -hmm. when we live in facade and in our mind, we can think, oh, I love men. I'm so ready for my soulmate to come along. Yes, we've and heard that many hundreds yes, of times, haven't yes, we? Yes, <laughs> we have. And so the re if, when we're in this state, we think to ourselves, okay, to, en to engage with preclusion, I, then I believe that what's inside of my soul is a lovely feeling towards men and desire for... I desire my soulmate. That's, that's what's really existing in my soul. Yeah. And then um, such a woman might have an interaction with a man and her real emotions towards men are not actually what she thinks, but no. she's living in facade in her mind and she believes that. Yeah. And through the interaction with that man, he decides he doesn't want to have a relationship with her. Yeah. And then she thinks, okay, absorption. This is about my daddy not loving me. I need to cry that I'm rejected. And so they, have, they think they're engaging with these processes. But when in reality, if they were to be more honest with themselves they might find that what is precluding the soulmate relationship, if you like, yeah. or love with their soulmate, is actually a feeling of rage and desire for control and demand, demand upon men. Yeah. And that's the real thing that they need to feel about. Correct. And when they engage the process of absorption, they will begin to feel about those things. Correct. And not their tell themselves, life will change. Yes. And this is the thing I feel about absorption. The proof is of whether you've done it is if your life naturally changed without you trying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the proof of if yeah. you've done it. If your life doesn't naturally change without you trying, then it means you haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to go and find another thing because you're not working on the thing that's actually the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. yeah, this is where I get very passionate about it 
honesty, self-honesty. and yeah. Because I know what it's like to live in facade and to live in your mind and tell yourself and try to process yeah. and engage this absorption principle. Yeah. And nothing changes and you just feel demoralised. Yes, and that's good. Because it, it's telling you, I agree, it's telling, telling you, you. You should be demoralised, you, you're doing the wrong thing. You haven't yet engaged <laughs> preclusion. You're not even looking at the snapshot that's there at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so we, that way we get to say, oh, oh, well, the fact that it didn't work means that I did the wrong thing. Yeah. Remember the soul's foolproof. Exactly. If we did the right thing, we would have changed. Yeah. If we've done the wrong thing, we're no change. Yeah. If there's no change, we've obviously done the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to feel awesome, like even just connecting to the truth of what's yeah. maybe not awesome, but there is, a, there is a feeling that comes with the recognition of truth. Well, I suppose yeah. you could say the reality is we'll feel pain when the emotional error releases. Mm -hmm. We'll feel pleasure when the emotional truth enters. And, um, and this is the beautiful thing about the way God's designed the soul. When emotional truth enters the soul, we feel that pleasure that comes from knowing this truth now. Yeah. And, and when the emotional error releases from the soul, we feel the the terrible pain associated with that error. Yeah. And that's how it releases, in yeah. fact, by feeling the pain associated with the error. It yeah. releases yeah. the error. And so we can't go through a process without feeling something. And we've got to be aware of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is there more that you would like to say on the principle? No, I think that's the main thing. I think, uh, I, I think this principle that if there is no change, then it means I haven't found the truth yet. Yeah. in my soul. Yeah. I might have thought the truth, but I haven't found the truth. I don't know it yet. Yeah. And we've got to stop telling ourselves that we know things that we're yet to change on. Yeah. You know, we don't know them. We only have heard them. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Our memory is recalling them. Yeah. We've heard them. Yeah. They've gone in our ear and into our memory, but that nothing else has actually happened yet. Yes. And until the soul actually engages this process of absorption, Nothing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will exactly. happen. And then we can't, t five years later, go, oh, isn't it terrible? I've been on the divine truth path for five years or whatever. And, you know, I've done this and I've done that and nothing's worked. Well, nothing's worked because you haven't engaged the process yes. from a soul-based perception. You've only heard things. You, you've only you know, remembered things that, and regurgitated things you remembered. No real change has occurred in your soul because you're still stopping that from happening. Because if you, were, if, if you were really engaging the change, your soul would have had to release a whole heap of error-based things. You'd be crying here and feeling ashamed about that there and feeling angry about this here and feeling sad about and fearful yeah. about that there. And you'd be going through all this emotional stuff and it will all be related to causal emotion, not to your rebellion and not to your desire to justify your current position. And once that happens... Real change will occur naturally and you won't even have to try to change. Yeah. It will just happen. Yep. It will just happen around you. It's magical. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and if we can remind people of that with this principle, then at least people know when things are not working, there must be something going wrong with their understanding of what is going on inside of themselves. Yeah. 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 And just call people, encourage people towards this true, deep, Honesty with self. Self-reflection. Self that, that's really based on God's truth, not on your own opinion. Yeah. So, you know, to actually have self-reflection based on God's truth is very, very different to having self-reflection based on your own opinion. Because yeah. most people who self-reflect based on their own opinion think that everything that they currently think is true. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas once we, start, once we start having some self-reflection about God's position and opinion, now we start to see that many of the things we believe are false, actually. Yeah. And yeah. that's when we have the opportunity to change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>